<laughs> Baesa pia baridi na mademu wa super mbaya Kiasi kiasi Eish ngapi Oh bado tunachochana It's okay Naona bado tuko kimoja Yes Karibu kwa ile mta enye all men and women are equal under one pia. <laughs> Una cheki wale. <laughs> Wanakula maisha pole pole. Ni kama wakiongeza haraka <laughs> itaisha. <laughs> Na unaona hao mauru wenye hata kuitawita lazima wapige binja. Leta pili. Imagine what wana kunywa bia ya bei moja lakini miaka ine kutoka hii time bei ya bia itakuwa imeshoot mbaya isi Kenya ya leo ngoa this is Kenya ya 1989 Yes. <laughs> Bia, the nectar of the gods. Unajua kongo is a very emotional thing. That is why maadvert kibao zinajaribu kufanya you feel something when you are opening that beer. When it has even taught some people English. You, you, you catch me like a rat on the highway. I've been driving for over 20 years. But mbona nakuchapia juu ya bia? Sinikwambia story yangu na yako ni kama drama. So, to recap, tulikuwa tumefika hapa. Nilikushow kuhusu my past, huh? My overseas connections with my big cousins. You know the name Dola. Venye in August 1971, Shemeji alipandishwa cheo kuwa global reserve currency. Watu wakaachana na gold, si ndio? Then tukarudi huku tukapata uhuru, bla bla bla. Corruption, bla bla bla. Then ikafika wakati wangoso walileta lugha ya kutulazimisha kufanya some things. But structural adjustments usually happens when a country has certain Uh, it either faces a shock or a country has certain uh, um, challenges in the economy yeah. which suggests that you need to actually change the structure so it's basically that's why you need to change structurally the structural adjustment programs were an array of programs that were started not only by the IMF but in conjunction with the World Bank for debt distressed uh, developing countries that were in economic turmoil yani Juvile viongozi walikuwa wamepanga nchi yetu ili kuwa inapigika sana na lazima tungeibadilisha sasa this is why walifanya hivyo <coughs> unacheki at independence kenya pronounce kenya ili model its economy around local production and industry gava ilikuwa player in nearly every sector agriculture manufacturing even tourism now to grow this economy we focused on import substitution kumanisha tuli block a lot of importation of finished products so that we could consume local produced goods and focus on export we also tightly control the amount of foreign currency in the 1960s 70s 80s up to 1990s developing countries came up with this idea that instead of just importing all the things that we need we try and create local industries that will make those products and then we stop any importation of those uh, products from outside therefore creating a market for our industries they can grow and create jobs and all that Now on the face of it anybody's going to ask well, what is the problem with that we industrialize our, our country 
The only issue with that was, the way it happened in practice was, you ended up with a captive market who are being sold low quality goods. And those, quality, uh, and those low quality goods, if you even tried to export them, they would never sell because they were very low quality, because there was no competition. Uh -huh. Many governments believed that foreign currency was very precious. So we had the Kenya, we, Kenya uh, by establishing a central bank and issuing its own currency, had that independence of its own monetary policy. But one of the things that it did was to try and make, sh to, to, to make sure that the shilling had a certain value against the dollar that does not change. Government actually fixed it for that. Um, so that's one of the fixing values, basically, fixing values. Government had a monopoly of trading currency, foreign currency. So even if uh, Kenyans sold goods abroad, the money would come and the central bank would actually hold it and exchange it for you because you do not have. So it's a, a way of limiting economic freedom by saying that foreign currency is so precious. Oh, we decide that to maintain its value, it means that only government can do it. So that's what, that's what happened. So those are called exchange controls. Before the era of liberalization in the 80s and 90s, Kenya used to employ exchange controls. This basically limited who can exchange uh, Kenyan currency for, for foreign currencies and, where they could, uh, and how much of that they could do. So in fact, back in the day, if you wanted dollars, you had to go to the central bank physically, because there was no internet, for you to exchange your Kenyan uh, currency for dollars, for example. That was the era of exchange uh, control. Mna menzea, izo exchange control zilikuwa noma sana. Gava, ili block makuzo wangu kutoka mayona kukuja hapa, wasiaribu soko ya. Hapo, ndio wazungu wakamu lazima Kenya tubadilisha uchumi yetu. Na pia, lazima to open up, end price controls, and let me and my brothers wa fight ndiyo tuwane currency gani kona nguvu. Which brings us back to the beer. His staff ilikuwa the golden goose of our economy. Wa Kenya si mababu zenyu wali nitumia sana kumuwa pombe in the 70s and 80s. Tusker Export. Brew to go with a good time. Ebu check it, Graf. Tax ilikuwa chini kabisa, alafu gava ilishikilia bei ndio isipande. Jua hizo ma price control, bei ya bia moja ilikuwa uniform. Kama unakunyo kiwa kibandani ama ubabini, bei ni moja. Lakini ju gava ilimesu chumietu. Na pia upande wa siyasa ilikuwe mewafinya sana nyinyi wa Kenya. Kila mtu alikuwa nadai mabadiliko. Hiyo time, Kenya ilikuwa nchi ya chama moja. Kidole, kidole, kidole. Mna kumbuka. Lakini, hapo 1990 kili umana. Kitu minauliza nyinyi leo. Ili tuone hawa walio katika siyasa, wale walio watumichi wa serikali, sisi tuseme kwamba tufungwe, tuondoe ile section ya katiba ya Kenya ya 2A. Yo announcement pia kwetu ilikuwa ni kama tunaitua wax. Orezo alikuwa mekelewa pressure mbaya <laughs> na wazungu. Opposition ilikuwa meamua kwamba Emo one, yani moi atarudi nyumbani. <laughs> so how do you get a hold of a lot of me when hata una ya kulipa madeni? You turn to a dark side. <laughs> now this is where things get interesting. From nowhere, hivi hivi tu mjama flani, anaitua Kamlesh Patni, akatokile ya kwa news. Watu alimsifu kama investor, the man with the golden touch. Bla 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 bla. Si unaelewa? Kenye mboge hii kujua was that Patni was the key to Kanu winning the 1992 election. Because Moi alielewa kwamba atahitaji doza kufanya vitu mob sana. The cost of running an election, cost of campaigning, the cost of just making sure that the government is well administered, the government administration runs well and is well oiled. Um, 
it's it doesn't come cheap we have to make sure that we um that all the people are paid the, the, the right people are paid at the right time we have to make sure that the services are delivered well we have to make sure that um everything moves as, as it's supposed to move and so that's where money comes in so money and democracy is very very important at this time uchumi ilikuwa imepigika sana manufacturing plants zetu zilikuwa zimeoza export zetu zilikuwa down so government iliamua that what they will do to increase export is to give people forex certificate or forex seeds yenye ingerahihisha chances ya wafanyi biashara kupata currency za mayono ili waanze ku import vitu pia for anyone who would export and get paid in foreign currency then deposit my cousin dollar with the central bank CBK ingempatia mimi in exchange na ngeongezewa 20% more of us on top forex certificates Uh, reply i mean rather um refer to the period when government controlled yeah. trading in foreign currency so you must remember that in when trading in foreign currency was was uh, was controlled it was actually illegal as a kenyan to have foreign exchange above a certain amount in your possession so what that means is that you needed a forex certificate meaning if you had a transaction as a business or as a person you'd have to apply to the government saying i am importing this machine i need this so the specific department of government say ministry of industrialization as an example would give you uh, authorization by saying yes this is essential this business would be useful and it's going to contribute employment taxes and all that in that way therefore we approve that you should apply and then you apply to the central bank in order to be a, a, a given forex uh, uh, um, we yes, a certificate which allows you to make claims at certain levels to to pay for that so remember the power that somebody at the central bank has to issue certificates to people it becomes a power that can be leveraged for wealth creation right for the person for instance in the golden bank scandal i mean somebody has a, a an export business that's selling gold you claim to sell gold and precious metals and so what you needed to do was you go to to say the ministry in this place i think it was the department of geological and mines department they verify the value of that gold once they do that verification you go to your bank right with those certificates to be credited with the amount of money equivalent because you give it to your bank and then of course your bank claims it from the central bank so who you partner na watu wengine wa intelligence akina james kanyotu waliunda mpango safi sana Patni created Golden Bag International fake export document saying that he exported tons and tons of gold CBK without any other proof wali ni to mawake hadi moi ali approve some of the transaction <laughs> we <laughs> sinilitesa wakati huo in total wali twiba to the extent that all of us ambaye tulibiwa tuli account for 10% of Kenya's GDP 600 million of my cousins walibiwa what's what hakuna kitu ili exportiwa and after some time of course it almost bankrupted the state because the obligations that were owed to these farms was so high but if the money is not coming it means government was actually throwing a lot of money at them for some reasons yeah. it is claimed that some some of that money ended up in politics the amount of money that was lost it is being estimated from something equivalent to 5% of Kenya's gdp some people claim it goes above 20% of gross domestic product the amount of value that is created now it is possible the upper estimates might be too high but but this thing was very very intense it went on for a very long time and it created fortunes for quite some people so the point was just a small amount of it was legitimate but as soon as they saw the opportunity to <laughs> to expand it a huge part of it was expanded and kenya the taxpayer lost a lot of value so i would say money and politics resources and power have had a relationship for a long long time and it's up to us to then understand how then could we benefit and how then could we make sure that the right person sits um you know with this power and has access to the resources and how then to be equitable equitably redistribute the resources we si tulikuwa wengi hadi tukakosa kitu inaitwa inflation 
Si unajua kama kitu iko kwa wingi kwa soko, bei ushuka. Imagine sasa hiyo kitu ni mimi. Tulishukishwa bei mbaya. Tena kama vile wazungu walitusho ilibidi serikali iache kutulinda tujifaitie in the global economy. Kumbe hatukuwa na nguvu hivyo. Kila currency ya majuu ilikuwa inatuchapa. But anyway, juu ya kuniiba na kunitumia kwa siasa. M1 alishinda urais. Watu opposition walibaki nje na Kenya ikaingia recession. That's when an economy I grow at a kidogo for nusu ya mwaka. So, back to the beer. I have money. Sinilikwambia that kampuni ya IBL ilikuwa inanitengeneza sawa sawa for many years. Ha? Wakati kiliumana, <laughs> serikali ikaona the easiest way kunipata ni kuweka taxes kwa tii. It's not logical. In just one year, bei ya pombe ili shoot by 153%. Chupa yenye tulitumiwa kama 30 of us ku buy one by the end of 1993 ingebidi tutumiwe 90 of us but just one beer hey yeah so the next time unakunywa chupa zako unafa appreciate the journey to expensive alcohol <laughs> but my story with you ajaisha sikutane mbele au sio Kama umena is nice works basi finya like hapo na pia usisahau kusubscribe kwa channel yetu ukifinya pia hiyo bell utapata updates za episode mpya zikikuwa wazi mzito